session for 2023 for the prep class. I would like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land on which this video is being made, as well as the land on which the schools are located. I would like to pay my respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and elders, past, present and emerging. Hello, my name is Madison Pace and I'm this year's prep teacher for Capella State School. I just thought I'd introduce myself and tell you, tell you a little bit about me. So I've spent 10 years in early childhood settings prior to moving to Capella, mainly in kindy and daycare settings. I graduated from CQU last year with my Bachelor of Education and started teaching out at Capella at the beginning of last year. So this is my second year in prep. I absolutely love the community and everything Capella has to offer and I'm really enjoying being a prep teacher. A um, little bit about me, I come from a large Aboriginal family from all over Australia. Um, I've got family in just about every state, territory and yeah, I am very proud of my culture and I love embedding different Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspectives into my classroom and into the school. I grew up in Mackay on Yui land and I did all my formal schooling on Yui land um, in Mackay. I love going to the beach and I am a big water baby. I love anything there is to do with water, whether that be stand up paddle boarding, scuba diving, snorkeling, fishing. Um, I love my camping and fishing and getting outdoors. I love to travel the world. I've um, traveled a lot domestically and internationally around the world and it's one of my favorite things to get out and do is to see different places and see how different people live in the world. Um, I also love arts and craft. I love painting and knitting and sewing and everything crafty as well. And I can't wait to get to know you all better as the year progresses and yeah, I really look forward to teaching prep for another year and having a wonderful 2023. So at a glance, what is PrEP? PrEP is the first year of formal education and learning for the students. We have some things targeted mainly at the preppies, and that includes Nurse Sue coming in Term 1 and Term 4 for some health checks. We do early start data and testing in Term 1 and then again in Term 4. This is where we really see where they start coming into PrEP and how their PrEP year has progressed and where they sit for their milestones. And this is over the English and Math um, strands for the preppies and yeah it really gives us a really good idea as to where they start and how their growth went throughout the prep year. We do PM reading. Now the reading goal for prep is based between a level 8 to 10 is the at level. To really achieve this level ways you can help your student is by doing the high frequency words and their reading with them daily. So going over the four to six high frequency words each week in the homework, but then also revising the previous week's homework um, high frequency words to ensure that they're retaining that information. This really assists the preppies in being able to read and hitting that reading goal of a level between eight to 10 at the end of the year. Homework is marked weekly to ensure um, that the learning is being consolidating. Um, please make sure that you're doing the reading, the high frequency words and all the activities on the sheet. This gives your prep student the dojos that they retire. So making sure that you're sitting down with your prep student and helping them assist them with their reading and the high frequency words and their worksheet, that'd be great. Uh, we have math and English goals every term for the students and the students are taught these goals and how they're going to achieve them. Um, we have parent-teacher interviews also in term two and term three. Well, you're welcome to book in a meeting with me and we can go over your child's data and how they're progressing as a learner.
Within the Australian curriculum, there are seven key learning areas. These include English, Math and Science. They are all taught with me in the classroom. We have HASS, which is Humanities and Social Sciences, as well as Technologies, both Design and Digital, with Mrs Espig. Mr Fordham will teach Health and Physical Education. And then we have the Arts, which includes Visual Arts, Drama, Music, Media Arts and Dance, which we do as a whole school, but also we do it in the classroom with me as well. So with English, we do seven hours of English per week. Within that seven hours, we also have 45 minutes of reading groups per day where we'll go through different activities and the children rotate to complete a different activity every day. We do different units every term around each of our subjects. So in term one, our unit is called Enjoying Our New World. And the assessment task for that one is responding to a story. So the students will respond to a story. We actually make a little video. We make our own costumes, everything like that. We do our little recording and then we play it back to the parents at the end of term one. So keep your eye out for that invite and it's a really good day because the parents can come in, see their learning in that first term and really how they've progressed over the first term of their education. In term two, we do enjoying, a retel enjoying and retelling stories. So retelling a story through an oral presentation. They do a drawing to assist this and they retell the story about the beginning, the middle, the end, likes and dislikes and everything like that within their oral presentation. In term three, the, we really up the ante in term three and term four when it comes to actually writing. So in term three, we this unit is called interacting with others. The assessment is creating and reciting a rhyme. So they actually write a rhyme based off rhyming words and then they relay that orally to the class. They also respond to a rhyming story, which is the oral component. But yeah, so they are starting to really write those sentences and create sentences using their sound and letter knowledge come term three. In term four, they're responding to a text, so they respond to and create an imaginative story. So the students are actually expected to write the story, the beginning, the middle, and the end, with complete sentences. They also do reading So math in a nutshell for prep, we do five hours per week and each term there's lots of substrands within the math that we cover, but the main focus each term is, so in term one, we focus on number and place value. We count to the number 10 as well as grouping familiar objects. So we do lots of grouping based on size, type, color and shape, as well as teaching the kids, how would you group that? And what's another way you could group that collection of objects? In term two, they count to and recall how many, they count forwards and backwards, they connect the number names and numerals and quantities, they subsidize collections up to five and they understand numbers from one to 20, as well as sorting 2D shapes. In term three, we use a measurement, so lots of counting days of the week and familiar events as well as sequencing activities. We use data to representation and interpretation, so lots of tally marks and different ways that we can record data, identify questions, answer yes or no questions, and use the data display to answer simple questions. In term four, it's number and place value, counting forwards and backwards from different starting points, 
representing quantities, comparing quantities, quantities and matching number names, numerals and quantities. We identify parts of a collection, identify an addition and join collections representing addition, exp additional experiences and then make equal groups. So we, that's where we really start to add the 2 plus 2 is and all that sort of stuff into the math. Here is another little infographic on what mathematics looks like in the prep year. Please feel free to pause the video and have a read if you like. For science, we do one hour per week. This is on a Tuesday afternoon between 2 to 3 p.m. Um, we're based off the P to 6 small schools curriculum. So in term one, our unit is called Changes Around Me, and that's exploring the sky and the land, as well as learning about how the weather affects the students and sharing observations about the weather. In term two, the unit is called Living Adventure, where the students are describing a habitat. They suggest how the environment affects living things, such as plants and animals, and they share and respond to questions about familiar objects. In term three, the unit is called Exploring Light and Sound. They investigate movement to describe the properties and behavior of familiar objects. So they share and reflect on observations and ask questions about familiar objects and how the movement all works in with that. In term four, it is material madness is what the unit is called, and it's around rocking the boat. So to describe the properties of a familiar object, to participate in a guided investigation and share and reflect on their observations. So they're really looking into what the materials are and how the material, different materials have different properties and how that works.
this is another little infographic on science and what science looks like for the prep year. Please feel free to pause the video and have a read if you wish. I know I've already emailed out the timetable to all our prep families this year, but this is just another copy of the timetable and what learning areas and what things we have going on in each section of the day and when our breaks are. set school we're a PBL school which is positive behavior for learning now the PBL school plan is we uh, have a positive place to learn we teach the students how to behave at school we tell the students when they're doing things right and we help the students when they make mistakes we work together with the parents to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that we're creating a safe happy learning space for all students um, within the PBL we have the PBL guiding matrix which is where we assess the children as to where they're sitting for their bronze silver and gold behavior We have a range of tools that we use to teach our positive behaviour for learning. So one of them is teaching the expectations. Our school-wide expectations are be safe, be responsible, be respectful, be a learner. They're communicated in all of our classrooms and our outdoor spaces. Really important for our kids to know those as well as our classroom rules. In each classroom, we do do the zones of regulation. And that's a daily check-in with our teachers and students to see where the children are at ready for learning or whether they need a bit more intensive support to get their day turned around. One of the other things we talk about constantly at Capella State School is the effort meter. So we talk about gold, silver and bronze effort. So for gold effort, we like to talk to the kids about exceptional effort. They couldn't possibly do anything more to improve. Great effort or that silver effort is they can do one or two more things to improve and they can make it a little bit better. For those children with that bronze level effort, they didn't uh, put much effort in. Um, there's definitely more things that they could do to improve. So it's important we really do set those foundations for kids so they know the expectations for book work, they know the expectations for effort. And we drill into them. The more effort they put in, the better outcomes in their learning. At Capella State School, we have different media platforms which you're able to follow and like us on. So we have our Facebook page. That is where most of the most relevant information will be posted for you if you need to find something quickly about what's coming up in our school or what's happening in and around the school. We also have our school YouTube channel. So please give us a follow and a like. You may have heard your child mentioning dojos. So the whole school does um, dojo points. So every staff member, every space, every day, students are getting dojo points for behaving well, showing respect, being responsible, being a learner and being safe. So following our four Bs of the PBL plan. Uh, and yeah, with those points, they can cash them in for different rewards um, throughout the term. And yeah.
the homework for prep is the expectation is that you're reading with your student every afternoon. So obviously at the start of the prep, they're not really reading yet. So really demonstrating for them what good readers do, pointing to the words as you read, reading the books and then getting them to have a go, get them to try and sound out the words and read the words as we go. As the week progresses, the more you read the book to them, they should be able to help. It should assist them with reading the story back because they've already heard the story multiple times. Um, the student should be reading uh, five to ten minutes a day and there's both a decodable book and a PM book and it's recommended that you read both of those because the decodables are able to be sounded out by the students so they're the much easier one and then the PMs will have words and um, word sounds that they haven't quite learnt yet and that they're still learning to sound out and recognise those words. We've got high frequency words, so you get the ch um, your children to chop them up, sound them out and get them to know them off by heart. We do four to six a week, but I recommend that you go back and revise the previous weeks in terms um, high frequency words to really retain that information. For the high frequency words to be ticked off in their high frequency book, they need to know the th word three times off by heart um, and that gets them the word ticked off in their book to be able to progress them further. Um, so it's yeah, really important that we're going back and revising the previous week's um, words as well as this week's words as well. We have a homework sheet. It's really simple. You have a little bit of math, a little bit of English, and it's really just the focus of the week around our literacy and numeracy goals. We also, it consolidates the learning and what we're roughly learning about at that point in time um, of the term. If you are after additional work for your child, we have the Mathletics and the Sora apps. The usernames and passwords were sent out at the start of the year. Feel free
this is some information on QParent and the Homework Centre. Um, so please feel free to pause the video if you like to have a little read of the infographic. But QParents is really important. You can put in your child absences. You, this is where you get your students' report cards, everything like that. So please make sure you've registered for QParents and that you're actively using QParents within the school. At Capella State School, all the breaks are the same for all year levels. So we have our brain break. It's 10 minutes only. It's around 10 a.m. So it's fruit or veggies where the children are able to sit outside, have something to eat, go to the toilet and have a little bit of a run around before we get back in and do some more learning. We have our first break. So there's the playtime from 11 a.m. to 11.30. Um, for our playtimes, the prep students play with the prep tier twos on the junior side play. They're also able to go to the multi-shared undercover area or the library or computer room for playtime. We have eating time from 11.30 to 11.50 and then second break is 1.30 to 1.50 and then 1.50 to 2 p.m. A second break isn't very long at all. So on a Friday for talk shops, uh, I would recommend not ordering a big portion of food for your second break because it isn't a lot of time for the students to eat it. These are the school contact details if you need to keep in touch. Call the office phone if your child is away or absent. You can also do this on Q Parents. We have assembly every morning at 8.45 a.m. and also on Zoom. We have the Capella State School website as well as there's my email and our Facebook page. Our Capella State School website has everything you need to know. It has all the online learning resources and everything for your student in regards to what's happening in the school and staff contact details. If your child is going to be away, we have a learning at home section. Please feel free to jump onto that to continue your child's learning. That is where we will send you if you're going to be absent and you need some additional work On this slide, it's just some information at the Learning at Home, the Mathletics, as well as Student SharePoint. Um, please feel free to pause the video and have a look about the different information which is accessible through our school website for the different online learning resources. If you have any questions, please feel free to click me in an email and I'll try to answer them as soon as 